Today, my uh, refrigerator broke. Uh, this handle attaches right here to the freezer section. This is a, a GE refrigerator. And this handle attaches to these two plastic clips. And the clips are screwed into the front of the, the door. The problem with my refrigerator is that it has a, a really good seal when it's closed on this freezer section. And so when you pull on this handle, there's just the slightest amount of give that makes it bend up and down. And eventually this clip fell. Now this is the second time this clip has fell. I bought a replacement clip once before, reinstalled it, and it broke again. So it's, it's a bad design. But I have a 3D printer. With a little creativity and time, effort, I can make a new one of these. So I'm gonna show you the steps that I completed to uh, replace this clip. And so I don't have to call GE again. I don't have to bother with shipping. I don't have to bother with warranty. I don't have to make calls and emails, wait for it to be delivered. I can basically design it, build it, and replace it with uh, no help from anyone else. Just takes a little bit of time and creativity. So let me show you how I do that. So the first thing you're gonna have to do is of course, take the piece off. Um, so just a small Phillips head screwdriver. Take this piece off right here. Detach it and uh, you can see the design of it. It's got two clips with these uh, little notches or catches, I guess you could say. And that's what's holding the handle in onto the, the clip itself. And it's got a sort of an alignment stabilizing pin right here. And then this big fat screw runs through here to attach it to the fridge. So I just need to rebuild this piece. It's, it's complicated, but it's not uh, crazy complicated. So here's the piece in a little bit more detail and light. You can see um, all the parts. Um, there's supposed to be a leg here that comes out just like this one, a matching one. So in order to replicate this in the 3D printer, I just built it from scratch using Google, uh, SketchUp software, the free version on the internet. Uh, just open it up in a web browser and begin creating. You are, you're going to need something like this, something that will take very accurate measurements because uh, if you just try to eyeball this and recreate it on computer, your dimension is going to be uh, really far off. This is uh, requires some very specific lengths and, and dimensions. Uh, it's got two different um, thicknesses. Here's a thickness right here. And here's a wider thickness, and these are rounded ends. You've got this angle here, so it slides into the, the um, handle very easily. And it's got a center hole here and a pin here, and obviously these need to be aligned. So you're going to need a very detailed caliper. This happens to be a Fowler brand, and it does millimeters in red. And uh, This is, again, not a video on calipers, but uh, you basically look at this top measurement right here, and then you look at the the gauge on, on the right, and you look at the red, and so if you line it up perfectly on a one, you should be about right there. You can see that's probably 1.0 millimeters, because the red needle is facing at zero, and it's showing one right here. And if you adjust this a little bit, you're at 1.2. So the nice thing about this caliper, it can measure between here, and it can also measure right here. Sometimes you wanna measure the inside of something. And this is a good example that I wanted to measure the inside diameter of this, this screw hole. And so I would just take this caliper and stretch it out and then look at the measurement. 
read it here, and then use that as my dimensions when I create it in SketchUp. Same thing if I want to measure the outside of this piece right here, I can measure this diameter and look at it on the scale and the gauge, get the exact measurement. Or if I want to measure this, this smaller semicircle diameter, measure right there. And of course I need to measure these legs that are this length right here. I measure, you know, every, every possible angle. It's got this kind of like a lip on top, so you need to know what that measurement is. Lots of different angles. The one thing on this uh, piece that serves no purpose is this cavity right here. I assume they did that uh, for either the casting that you, is used to make it or just to save material because it does serve no purpose. The pieces that parts that do serve a purpose are this pin and these clip legs, the screw hole, and of course just the thicknesses of each component so it slides perfectly onto that handle. So now let's move on to the software. I've already built this model in SketchUp. I'm not going to take the time to recreate this or show it in detail while I'm building it. Obviously there's a lot of trial and error when you're building something in this fashion. Uh, you're going to build it two or three times before you get it perfectly uh, similar to the real life model. But within the Google SketchUp, uh, again, this is a free software that you, anyone can use. You just log in, register, and begin creating. I am not going to teach any SketchUp skills in this video. I'm just showing the fact that I did recreate it, and I made it, recreate it on almost perfect in every way. Some things that didn't matter, for example, is the pin on the original piece was flattened. Uh, and I made a perfect circle pin. All it needed to do was fit inside the hole there. And uh, so if I rotate this around, you can get an idea of all the different angles. You can see I made these small gaps between the two legs. I also made a angular cut on the front so these slide in onto the handle. I made a hole in the middle for the screw. I have the pin right here. This uh, lip that goes over the top and you can see the bottom is flat. And like I said, there's no cavity like the original piece had, but again, that cavity serves no purpose. So that's the finished product. It took me three versions to make this. The first version uh, came out and it was a little bit too thick right here in this area and a little bit too wide. I didn't have my measurements as exact as I thought I did. And my pin on the second version was off just a tiny bit. And so the pin plus the screw were not aligned. So I just had to move, move those closer together. And the model was complete. After designing the model in SketchUp, uh, the next step to creating a 3D print is to open it in a slicer. I use a Dremel Digilab 3D45 printer and there is a slicer that comes with the, the printer. And so you load this uh, model in the slicer. Uh, basically, you have to export it out of Google SketchUp as an STL file and then load it in the slicer. And then all you basically do, once it looks good, you take a look at it, make sure that it uh, fits flat on the, the platform, the build platform, and it looks correct. Then you prepare it and save it to an external drive or send it over the cloud to the printer itself and begin printing. This is a very small piece and it took about 30 minutes to complete. This is the 3D printer at work. It's not building the uh, clip Right now it's building something else that I'm designing, but it is showing it working on another object. 
And the Dremel Digilab 3D45 is a good machine. I haven't built a whole lot with it, but what I have built has come out really nice. I decided to use the supplied black ABS filament that came with the printer for this piece. Color, of course, didn't matter, even though the original piece is white. The printer comes with two spools. It comes with the ABS, and it also comes with this PETG translucent filament. But I chose to use the black one. I can't really tell you if it's a better or worse a filament or plastic compared to what um, the clip is, but it, it should work fine. And this is how it came out. This is the finished product. And like I said, it did take three versions of this um, just because I wasn't very accurate on the first two. The reason it has some scuff marks uh, that you see around the edges is because when this builds on the build platform, it had supports because it builds flat like this and uh, the 3D printer needs supports to make sure that these overhangs don't just uh, get printed in thin air. They have to have a support for it from the base. But uh, I've got the, the angled corner right here, a notch to grab hold of the, the handle. It's got the screw hole, as you can see. It's got the pin on top, and it's got the two different semicircle dimensions, a thinner one right here and a thicker one right here, a gap. And you can see even I've got these, these uh, little notches right here that allow these clips to have a little bit more flexibility when they're being pried onto the handle itself. So let's install it and see how it looks. All right, pin goes here, screw hole goes there. So it just snaps in place. And next we need the screw. Just place that right there. Screw it in nice and tight. Feels pretty solid. And last but not least, make sure you got everything aligned. Put the handle on. Nice and flush. Slide to the right. And the handle is there and it's firm. You can see I'm wiggling it quite a bit. It's not moving, it's solid. Maybe even better than before. Well, that's it. Um, that took me, I don't know, maybe an hour or two of building, designing and building in the software. Um, took maybe 30 minutes per print. And like I said, I did uh, three, three different prints. So tried one, didn't quite work. Tried another one, didn't quite work. Tried the third one and it works perfectly. Hope you enjoyed my video. Please click on some of my others and subscribe and like the video if it was helpful to you. Thank you.